Okay, get ready. We're going live in five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. We're excited about this wonderful day that uh, God has blessed us with. And, it, and it's amazing how wonderful the weather is all over the country today. And we sing our hearts go out to those who suffer some loss as a result of all the snow. Uh, and we're just happy that we have this opportunity to get back together again on this Tuesday evening as we share together another thought that perhaps will help us in, in our acquisition of the wealthy life that we're supposed to be living. I'm happy today to have with me uh, Tasha M. Dyer and Dr. Craig Bifewood. They're with us today. We want to give them an opportunity to say hello before we jump right into our topic. Well, hello, 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 everyone. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tasha M. Dyer. Yes, I'm definitely excited to be here with our broadcast, Hidden in Plain Sight. So let me say hello to every last one of you all at the Rejoice 904 Network who is who are listening to us live right now. Hello to our Facebook friends, audience. Now share, share, share. Make sure you share this information. If you see us on Facebook, share this page. We're talking about 1 million families financially educated and impacted. And so we definitely want to make sure that we're reaching the 1 million. So, but once again, I'm just excited to be here, hidden in plain sight, another week, another broadcast, another chance to be elevated. And also, of course, I look forward to doing this broadcast with my colleagues. Thanks again, Bishop, for allowing us this opportunity. So once again, thanks everyone. Dr. Craig Bifewood always has something wonderful to say, very informational. We're glad to have you today. How are you this evening? I am doing outstanding, Bishop, and I really appreciate those positive words. To our listening audience, I say hello to you. And as always, I am always so enamored to be a part of this group. Everyone that is anyone should have a mastermind team. What is that? a group of individuals that have your same type of energy, that have your same vibration, that have your same goals and objectives in mind. And we, and all of those who can hear my voice right now, we are all part of this collective consciousness, this mastermind that is gearing all of our efforts and all of our energies toward making this world a better place from an economic wealth and abundance perspective. So glad to be on the air. Thank you, Dr. Bifewood. And today we have a very interesting topic. And I want to say that, Mr. Rogers, we, we, we are excited and we, uh, about you uh, handling your business today. We miss you and wish you were here with us. And we hope that you maybe have the opportunity to join us later on. And uh, maybe uh, Ms. Dyer won't lock you out. But if you can't get in, then you know that's what happened. <laughs> uh, today we want to talk about... Uh, our minds and soul uh, for the words we speak flow out of what we are thinking, the thoughts that are in our heart. And the results that we have, I, my, my childhood pastor used to always say, uh, a man is a product of his teaching and his thinking. And so we want to just see what the Bible says as it relates to the words that come out of our mouth and the thoughts that come out of our hearts. And the result is our very existence that we are experiencing even today. Miss Dyer, do you have a passage of scripture found in Proverbs 18, chapter 18 and Proverbs chapter 23? I do, I do. So here we go. Proverbs 18, 19 through 21 in the NIV. A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like the barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Also, I have Proverbs 23, 7 through 9. For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. You will vomit up the little you have eaten and will have wasted your compliments. 
Wow. And so as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I believe, I believe what comes out of our mouth is a result of what we are thinking in our heart. And I want to bring a little clarity uh, about that Old Testament word, think. It means what we say to ourselves. And hence what we say, it, we make a declaration about our, our, or formulate a purpose for ourselves. And, and so that word think in the Old Testament is a very powerful word. And it, it, it points back to self-talk and what we say about what we feel is going on around us. And the sage said in Proverbs uh, 18 that we will eat based on or we will be our bellies will be filled based on the words that come out of our mouth and so we have to really be careful about what we allow ourselves the thoughts out we allow ourselves how we allow ourselves to formulate thoughts in our mind because we are the product of those our present condition is a product of our thinking and so we have to make sure that we say good things to ourselves and about ourselves and about what is about to happen in our lives because what we say will determine what we're able to put in our bellies i don't know about some of y'all but i'm alex i like to put good i was looking at the chilean uh sea bass the other day i like to put chilean sea bass in my belly and that costs money and so all of that says to me that we, i have in my pocket what i have in my pocket is a result of what comes out of my mouth uh can you receive that today do you believe that Absolutely. is that scripture is that scripture i believe it's scripture that we have to be careful about what we say and what we allow people to say around us and to us and what we allow what we allow our minds and our spirits to absorb uh miss dyer understand you have a testimony regarding uh these this passage and this thought for this evening absolutely absolutely so as everyone knows well first and foremost let me say hello to the bahamas i see you um online i see your comments so hello 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 Be well. i have, thought, I have thought about visiting you in the bahamas <laughs> <laughs> be well, be worldwide. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I mean, we it, we the power is inside of us, and so we really have to understand what we're focused on is what is going to manifest. I mean, it's out there; it's scripture, and God put that into place. And most people call it the laws of attraction, and you know the energy because that's what we are. And so. When you really, really, really look at it and you really, really, really think about it, you know, we all know that we're talking about a skill set. You know, this broadcast is aimed at us understanding that we're learning a skill set. Information has been hidden in plain sight. And so anytime we want to develop a skill set, there's an educational process and there's an educational journey. So this is this is literally no different. And that's ultimately what we're doing. And so when we say, you know, hidden in plain sight, or when we say this is something we want to accomplish, there is definitely a learning curve. And so the testimony that Bishop is referring to, if you all know me or have heard of who I am, we know, yes, I've been coined the trade whisperer. I am an educator. I have a copywritten strategy that actually is a God brief strategy that was I actually created. And so this is something that's being traded globally around the world. And so for those of you all who meet me today, you believe like, oh, okay, this is something she really dove in, she studied for, you know, this and that or whatever. But the reality is, is nobody ever wants to look at that backstory. Nobody ever wants to look at where it began because I was no different than any one of you all. The information had been hidden in plain sight Yes, uh, you know, licensed financial advisor, working with money, those things. But the reality is, is I had absolutely no idea how to navigate these markets or these charts, because even though it's in your study material, that's not the focus when you get a, when you go to get some employment through a brokerage and to sit down and working with individuals with their retirement accounts. 
So the testimony ultimately is that it was a learning curve for me as well. I'm the one that literally had to sit and I studied and studied and, and wanted to understand how to navigate the charts, how to be in profit, right? So this was also, so we do affirmations, we speak life. That's what we focus on. That's how we start each and every single call. And the reason behind that is I had a learning curve. And so in the very, very beginning there, you know, I had to overcome that curve. I had to overcome understanding that this is, it's not difficult, it's just different. And I had absolutely no idea. So I had to go through the same process everybody else does. But what I used to speak to myself is when I was learning and or I would come into a roadblock or I would come to the point where I did not understand something, I would not get frustrated. I would not back down. I would not pull back. What I would do is I would speak life into myself. And one of those affirmations in that life I spoke was, I am a master Forex educator. And now why did that come about? Like, what did I see coming from that? I have absolutely no idea. But I knew I was going bigger than what I wanted to accomplish because nothing was gonna stop me from learning this skill set, And that's ultimately what I was thinking. So I decided to strive greater. I decided to strive for more than what I really wanted to accomplish. And I spoke life and now I'm the creator of the BYOB cash out strategy. I'm the one that literally God breathed this strategy into. And we're because of this movement, you know, that gave a platform for individuals around the globe to be financially educated and impacted through that. So my testimony is literally I did, I spoke life. And I spoke life greater than what I thought I was going to accomplish. And God blessed me even greater than I ever thought that he would because I walked in that and I spoke life into it. Absolutely amazing. Dr. Byford. Well, that's a very powerful testimony uh, that Ms. Dyer just provided. And I always say that I'm so blessed to have a front row seat on the evolution of all of us as leaderships. I'm able to look at myself and look at Mr. Rogers and look at Ms. Dyer and look at the strategy and look at the company and look at the BYOB movement. So it's such a wonderful thing to be able to observe uh, the growth. And the way in which we operate as a movement, it oftentimes reminds me of the world. You know, we're always growing and we're always expanding. Once we, we grow to a particular point in our brains, we never go back. Our expanded state always stays the same. We're, we're growing as, as a planet. We're growing as a universe. So just to hear that story, every time I hear it, it, it provides, a, if I can be a manly man, goosebumps. And so when I think about this concept, it puts me in the mind of a pastor's wife that said this years ago. She said, your words are like toothpaste. Once you get that toothpaste out of the tube, there's no putting it back. Once it's out, it is out. So that says on the one hand that we have to really be conscious of what we're saying and how we're saying it. But as both of you have already alluded to, we also have the responsibility to understand that by the time you squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube, that's not the, the cause, that's the effect. You had to go to the store, you had to purchase the toothpaste, you had to pick the one that you want. So there's so much that goes into the process before you speak words that you may want to put back in the tube. So we have to do what I call front end managing where we put our energy into, like I started the call with, surrounding ourselves with energy that is going to be value added, that is going to be about your business, being around people whose energies match yours, having goals and objectives that are matched by those around you. Because we can not only be quick to say things that we may regret, but watch this, we're so quick to let the words of others affect us. Just today, I was having a conversation with my oldest who is 19, and I was giving her some spiritual ways to conduct her life so that she'll be happier. And she kept responding with, well, what if they say this? What if they do this? And so sometimes we are the individual 
that is mastering the tongue and making sure that we're walking in life and death like verse 21. But we've got to be careful because sometimes we're the verse 19 hero, hero, where we are the one that is being wrong. So we have the power to not only speak life and death, but also to perceive life and death and decide whether or not we're going to allow someone to wrong us. My final comment on this segment is this. There's an African proverb that says, he who angers you conquers you. We have to walk in God's love to the point where there's not even a battle. I like that. Yeah, that, that is tremendous, uh, Dr. Bywood. And, and I, I like what you said about uh, the, the people that we allow to uh, surround us because uh, what we say and what is said around us certainly impact what we think and our thoughts and our words. Uh, Jesus said it. Uh, he said, it's not so, what so much said to the Pharisees. He said, and they were, they were call themselves teachers of the people. He says, not so much what goes into a man that defiles a man is what comes out. And those words that come out has have power to, to infect people to do uh, wonderful things or it can affect them in such a way where they are reduce the living beneath or what God created them to be. And, and so uh, we have to be careful that we, we, when we say we are saying words that uh, it reinforce God's purpose for, for the lives of those that are hear us. And, and so uh, that, that's, that's such an a important thought that you, you brought forth, Dr. Brightwood, that those that are the environment we find, we place ourselves in, we need to be uh, really particular about those that uh, we allow to speak into our lives. You have to also think about how you speak to yourself. That's ultimately where it's going to begin. Because if you speak power and truth to yourself, then you're going to be mindful of what you speak to others and what you allow others to speak to you. I mean, God said, you know, I am. He is the I am. He is the great I am. And so we have to begin to think about what we put behind that I am. So even when you go back to the testimony that you just asked me and you think about like, I didn't say I'm confused. I am. I will never get this, you know, you know, or, or just think about things that people say when you run into frustrations or you know, you run into anything, it's always a I am this. And so just kind of think about how we talk to our children or when they're calling us, you know, we grab, they grab our attention when they call our names. And so if God is the I am, he is the great I am, and we're saying those things, we're grabbing his attention. And so what are we manifesting into our lives and what are we pouring into our lives? So you have to speak life, right? We cannot speak trials and tribulations and controversy you have to speak what you want to manifest. If you want wealth, you want healing, you want peace, whatever it is that you're looking for, you have to speak it and you have to speak it with boldness and belief. I am. And whatever comes behind that I am is what you are. That's true. And it's so true what you just said, Miss Dyer, because the, the Hebrew word used here for thought is uh, amar what one say to himself and hence declare or formulate purpose. And so you're exactly right. You know, it's even more important uh, what we say to ourselves about what's going on around us and, and, and what we declare within our soul and our spirit. Job said, what I spent the most time thinking about has come upon me. He said what I, and the, the, the passage really says, uh, what I fear the most has come upon me. And so he's, what he spent the most time thinking about is actually what actualized in his life. And so that's, that's very true that, that we have to make sure that our focus in, in our time that we spend with ourselves is a positive time. Now, what do you mean, Bishop? You're talking about uh, time I spend with myself can be uh, negative? Yes, it certainly can, because we can say 
negative stuff. We can find ourselves walking out of a situation and make and be commentating on what has just happened and what it, what it, and giving definition to what has just happened. And it could be in a negative experience. Or we can we can make it a positive experience by what we say, what we declare and decree in our lives and what is happening in our life can be a part of God's purpose for our life. And it can on what God's purpose can only be possible for our lives. And so you're absolutely right, Ms. Dyer, that that's very important about what we say to ourselves. Uh, I'd like to just add this, Robinson, and, and comment on, on those two great points that were made. So I'd like to take our listening audience through a little exercise. This is participation. So I can see you out there, listening audience. So please participate. I want each one of you to think about your favorite song. Okay, you got that in your mind. Now I want you to think about your second favorite song. Okay, so right now, there are two songs that have been brought to your attention based on me asking you to think about these two songs. Now, here's what I would like for you to do, listening audience. Right now, I'd like for you to sing both songs at the same time. <laughs> exactly. It's impossible. You have to choose. You have to decide which one of these songs am I going to sing? So this is more than just a scripture. This is a framework for how we can live our life and also how we can direct our lives because you have the ability to choose life or to choose death. There's no way for you to sing them both at the same time. Which song are you going to sing? So exercise, that now transitions into a story, an anecdote. I have this conversation with my beautiful mother often about gas prices. So how about those gas prices? And I never know the answer. I never know what they are because I don't look at gas prices. And what I've explained to my mother is, I don't look at them because I have to have gas regardless. I've got three demanding little girls that want to go everywhere around the city. Why did I say city? State and region. So I'm always <laughs> driving so I don't look at gas prices because the concept of not affording is a thought process I don't even want to deal with. So she knows that, but literally three days ago, she said, those gas prices are through the roof. Now let's ignore the mother's son <laughs> nuances of the fact that she brought up something that we talked about before and let's jump right into the point I said to my mom mom who defines the roof we decide what the roof is we decide that there's a roof there's stadiums now that have retractable roofs so we don't have to have a roof but if we decide to sing the song that there's a roof that is going through. If we decide to sing the song that it costs a lot, if we decide to sing the song of not being able to afford it, then we will bring into our stomach, we will bring into our lives, we will bring into ourselves the fruit of not being able to afford it. So yes, Bishop, yes, Miss Dyer, yes, word of God, we have to recognize which song we're going to sing. I like that, Dr. B. And if you think about it, that's really your focus. What you're saying is your focus because we can really focus on the issue. We can focus on the problem. We can focus on that, which is going to create a second and third level effect of your focus of can I afford this or my focus of how this is going to impact my pocketbook or your focus, right? Or you can focus on making sure that that's not an issue because you're economically unbothered. So I don't care what the gas prices are. I don't care, you know, what's happening out there because I know my economic threshold is, is good. So it doesn't matter what's happening on the outside because what's happening on the inside within me, my focus is there. So I'm always in abundance. That, that is wonderful. And, and I want to go back to something Dr. Pikewood said uh, when he talked about uh, uh, having an attachment to or uh, 
the New, New Testament uh, definition of the word says that it's a thought that we cherish. You know, I, I, you find, you know, in, in, in counsel, sometimes I do counseling, I find that people uh, cherish the negative stuff. They seem like want to hold on to it and want to let it go. It's just like it's something they're in love with. You know, you just can't, you can't pry out of, out of that mind you, with a crowbar. You can't do it. Because it's something they, they want to hold on through, on to whether, whether it's beneficiary to the direction of their life or, or not. It's just, uh, I, I don't, I don't understand it, but you know, uh, that's how some people find themselves in, in that position where they like to hold on to negative and then they, they hold on to this habit of, of uh, speaking negative things in, in a conversation. You try to, you know, you know when they when they when they when they hit the door, it's gonna be something negative that come out of their mouth. It's gonna be a negative experience. And, and pretty soon people don't even want to be around people like that. It's like it's like a cartoon I used to watch. One of my used to be one of my favorite cartoons was about Gull Gulliver's Travel. Uh, Mr. Dyer, you're not old enough to understand what I'm about to say. You you didn't see Gulliver's Travel. But Gulliver was these these little little uh these guys that got shipwrecked on his way on this island, giant people. And and they were trying to figure out how to get off of off of this island. And uh, there was a uh, somebody would come up to, with an idea. Every time someone would come up with an idea, uh, old hard luck Shep Rock would say, it'll never, it will never work. And there was always his response, no matter what somebody came up with. His response was he, he always would be able to tell you why it would not work. And uh, uh, you know, it's it's very difficult to operate any kind of organization with someone who's willing to, unwilling to step outside of the normal parameters. Now, if your normal parameters are, is brokenness, I indeed want to step outside of that. In order to get out of that, I got to step outside of that thinking and step into a new arena. And, and some people are challenged with stepping outside of the thought patterns that have them in their present situation. And, and so we have to have enough faith and belief that we can step outside of those parameters that even though we are comfortable with the negative, you know, it's, it's like Egypt, the folk over in Egypt, they were comfortable, even though they were slaves, they've been beaten and robbed and worked for nothing. They were comfortable in slavery. And when they got outside in the new territory, some folk said, why you brought us out here? It's, it's hot and we don't have the food we had over there. We don't have the water we need, you know, all those, all those, uh, different issues that were discussed uh, in, in Exodus. And, and so we find ourselves comfortable in something that is, uh, uh, has a continuous negative impact and will never allow us to obtain the purpose that God has for us in our life. Hmm. Are you talking about Gilligan's Island first and foremost? No, I'm not about Gillen. It's Gulliver's Travel. <laughs> you knew that, uh, Miss Dyer. I told you you didn't know anything about what I was talking about. <laughs> well, I had to try. I had to try. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, a whole other, whole other thing, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, but um, so you're right. I I don't know that one. <laughs> Now you know about Hungerberry Finn. You know about that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, Louisiana, that how that happened in the Mississippi, New <laughs> but, but the reality, I mean, you know, you, I'm, I'm sidetracked now. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, just thinking about it, you know, I was on a training the other night, and one of the comments that was made was, "When you get, you know, we'll complain all the time, but you know, he." He told a story and I'm gonna just quickly summarize it, you know, really quickly, but basically it was about a dog that kept sitting on a nail on the porch. And it's like, you know, everybody's looking at it like, why he keeps sitting on that nail? It's not uncomfortable enough. So we can complain all the time, you know, we can, you know, we can really complain about what's going on, but the reality is this is all you're doing is complaining. And at some point in your life, you have to be, you have to want more. You have to, you know, want to understand that there is more. And so 
once again, it's all about that shift of focus because we know we're talking about a skill set development. We know we're talking about information that's available to each and every last one of us, you know, or we can continue to point the finger. You know, there are individuals in the midst of COVID that actually increased their wealth. And I actually was speaking with someone today who has actually just accepted the challenge to be their own bank. And one of the comments he was saying is he was reading some of the testimonies in our community, in our Telegram community. And if you're on Telegram, go join our Telegram community, be your own bank, BYOB cash out. You can definitely search that in Telegram. You can find it and you can join it. And that's through Telegram Messenger app. But he was reading some of the testimonies in there and he was just, you know, kind of fun, just kind of rolling through there. And he was looking at the amount of people that were able to leave their jobs at the end of last year. Now, of course, if you like doing what you're doing, keep doing what you're doing, right? But you, the only way you can truly say you enjoy a job is if you were willing to go there without the paycheck, without that return, right? You go there for the time and they give you a check. If you'll go there and you'll do something without being paid for it, that's when you ultimately enjoy it. Um, and you're just doing it because that's where your heart is. Now, but what he was saying is that when things were the worst and most people were looking for employment and most people were looking for jobs, he's scrolling through there and there are individuals that have exceeded. I mean, even on this morning's call, we had someone that was able, on the hour call that we did this morning, they were able to pay all of their bills for next month. That was a testimony this morning. And so when you look at that, that you can have enough income, right, by making a withdrawal out of the market, by what someone did, you know, in an hour and it paid all of their bills for the next month. This is what's happening. So you just have to be at a point where you say, you know what, I'm tired of being tired. You know, you have to be at that point where you say, I want more and I'm willing to do more. I'm ready to be more. I'm ready to achieve more. And you have to want it. So we cannot be comfortable with the negative and, you know, because that's all you're doing is complaining and that doesn't solve any problems you know you look at the world we live in right you're right bishop right now that's what most people focus on they focus on the problems they focus on what's happening you focus on you know that shift and when you change that focus and you focus on the positivity and you walk in that just imagine what would transpire and what would happen if everybody took a positive perspective and looked at being a change instead of part of the problem because if you're not part of the solution you are definitely part of the problem and so you have to make that shift and when are you going to get tired of sitting on that nail when are you going to get tired of complaining that there's a nail on the porch when are you going to get tired and say, you know what, I'm ready to get up and I'm ready to move forward. And nobody's gonna hand it to you. Nobody's going to just pull you through it. You have to get up and walk through it. And so, you know, when they got up, you know, when they got up, you know, they, it, hey, it's just like sometimes when you look at society today, you can really understand why it took 40 years to go those seven miles. I mean, it's the same thing. I think the same thing would have happened today. So, but you have some individuals that say, you know what? I'm, I'm, this is not my life and this is, I want more and I want greater and I'm not gonna be part of the problem. I'm going to be part of the solution for my legacy, my legacy's legacy, my children's, my children's children. And I'm gonna walk in the faith that, and I'm gonna walk into the anointing and I'm gonna walk into what God has for me. And when you're there, you know that, hey, when you're there, we're here. And that's what we're here to help guide you through. That's right, Dr. Byfoot. You know, there's a process that we humans go through where we reject those things that are going to be able to get us to a, another level. And everything that Ms. Dyer is saying is true, but we really have to recognize that this movement is about coaching and mentoring and giving examples of where we were so that other people can realize that when they go through those same scenarios, that it's okay. We're not judging you. We're just showing you a different way. We, we don't do 40 calls a month because the trading is hard. We do 40 calls a month because the mindset is hard. And you've, we've got to shift it. I've got a perfect example. I was sitting in my house the other day and on the laptop and a commercial came on about this new show that's based on Silence of the Lambs. And... I oftentimes ask people, why is Silence of the Lambs called Silence of the Lambs? And nobody ever knows. You know, we just go to the movies and enjoy it. We don't think about it. But here's why. 
In Silence of the Lambs, Clarice tells the story of when she spent her childhood on a farm. And she talks about the fact that when a lamb would be taken to slaughter, that they would scream and holler and it would just make her feel so bad and she wished that she could do something for the, for the sheep. And what would happen is every time one lamb would go away, they would lock the gate behind them so that when it's time to get the next lamb, they'd have to open the gate. Well, Clarice went and left the gate open so that the, the sheep could escape. You can escape now, sheep. You don't have to be slaughtered. Here's your chance for freedom. And what would happen is that when the person would come to get the sheep, they were silent. They stood right there. They were so used to captivity. They were so used to just being somewhere waiting to be slaughtered that they didn't make a sound when it was time for them to get their freedom. And humans, we have to own the fact that we do that. We do that. The most compelling statement ever made to me when I shared this opportunity with someone is when one of my doctor colleagues said to me, there's no way it's that easy. That is what we're conditioned to do. The gate is open, folks. All we have to do is walk through it. But we're so silent. We're so used to it. We're so comfortable with being still and, and allowing ourselves to stay in captivity. So that is the reason why we do 40 calls a month, because we want to teach people how to go for that freedom. Run to the gate. Run, run, run. And that's so, that's so important, Dr. Bightwood, that we be able to, uh, to mentor and to coach and to do it uh, uninhibited by uh, our own financial needs. And, and so uh, uh, I thought about that earlier today. Uh, I've been spending some time with one of my friends who has his business. He does about a half million dollars a year and he's at that point where he wants to go to the next level and you got to try to decide whether you're going to buy equipment or hire someone and he's kind of struggling with that. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll come in and I'll, I'll be the, I'll be your manpower, you know, for six months for free. And, uh, you know, everybody can't do that. You know, everybody can't just say, I'll, I'll help my friend for free. He won't just, just, just be there for you. Uh, but you know, what we're talking about is a vehicle where we can mentor. And so, you know, the other day he said, he said, you know, I'm, I'm 70, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be right much longer. And my son, he's 28. He's in there. And I feel so much better that you already under, and you know this when you understand it. And I need you to coach and mentor him uh, when I'm gone. You have those kind of conversations. And, and so, uh, you know, I said, well, uh, Bruce, uh, if I'm if I'm mentoring him, uh, that means I'm pouring into him. And if I'm coaching him, I'm, I'm, I'm extracting or pulling out what's already, you've already put in him, the abilities and talents that you have. And I think sometimes we, people who call themselves being mentors don't understand that when you come to the table to mentor, that you have to bring some knowledge, some information that is positive, positive to that person that you are mentoring. And if you're coaching, you know, coach is able to, uh, pull out of you what you didn't know was really in you. You know, if, you, if you're running, you know, he can make you run, give you some stuff that make you be able to run a little faster or hit a little harder, you know, uh, run for a longer distance because you have a good coach who knows how to pull that out of you. And so uh, we need positive. We need people who can plant in us as mentors that which is positive and can be cultivated to uh, by someone else to come out of us and make uh, us prosperous. And, and we, need, we need time for that because that we got a generation out there who, have, who, are, who are energetic, who are ready, 
But when it comes to connecting to this economy out here, we have no understanding. So those of you like Dr. Bifewood, Ms. Dyer, who have that information, uh, you have to be, this vehicle allows you and others who we have not met to be able to be economically unbothered so you can take the time to share and to uh, mentor. And Ms. Dyer has a way, I think it's, she, she may, probably could have made a drill instructor at some point because we can really get it out. <laughs> she can really get it out of it when she wants to. And so I just think that's so important. Uh, to be able to do that without any reluctance. I mean, you said uh, you you said it, Bishop. You said it. I mean, I don't even think it's any follow up needed behind that. I mean, you said it. And then you, when you look at wanting to receive from someone, you look at you know, because I mean, everybody right now, every time, every corner you turn, someone is a coach. I'm a mentor. I'm a life coach. You know, everybody has all these titles, but they have no fruit. You know. And so before you start receiving from someone, see, that's how you put yourself in situations where you develop those negative thoughts and you feed those because you're willing to connect with someone who has no fruit. And you have to look at what the, the fruit that the tree is bearing before you allow that person to pour into you. And so if it's nothing but negativity or there is no production, there is nothing there, then allow that to manifest in that person before you start allowing them to pour into you and before you start receiving from them. And so that's like, I mean, Dr. B said it, that's why we do what we do, you know, because we have the fruit, we have the success. And what we've learned through our expertise and what we've learned through our credentials and our backgrounds, I mean, even, you know, yourself, Bishop, I mean, look at the success you've had in life. I mean, and just, just in its totality, and so when we know that there's more out there and we know for a fact that this information is out there and we know for a fact that, you know, we're not going to sit back and hoard it to ourselves, you know, and where so many individuals are like, oh, well, the wealthy just keep getting wealthy and that's not for everybody. And, you know, the poor always be amongst us. I want you to look at the biblical context of what that really means and what was happening when he said that. And we make, we ultimately make the decision if we're going to remain poor, if we're going to remain in those scenarios and those positions. So you wanna attach yourself to individuals who are there to pour into you that's going to elevate you and lift you up. And that's why we do those 40 calls. That's why we're here on this radio broadcast. That's why you know, we're just pouring out because the information is there. It's been hidden in plain sight, but the blinders have to be removed. And that mindset, skill set has to shift. Your mind has to shift to where you know that it's, it's mine for the taking. And, and I'm going to have everything in my heart's desires, you know, because God ordained it. Well, God, you know, as long as you're walking in his will and what he called you to do, then he ordained it. And so you just need to walk in it and own it and be great at it. And let's remove that stinking thinking. And so true, Dr. Bywood. A, a thought is going through my mind right now, and I'm, I'm going to change that to going through my heart. <laughs> Somebody that I care about a lot became our business partner. They accepted the challenge to be their own bank. And I said to them, this is simple. You plug in, you succeed. And if not, then it's the other option. And I made that very clear, and I said it every single day for three straight days. So the person did not plug in. And then when it was time for them to do their renewal, they said to me, I have to be honest with you. I just can't afford it right now. And what went through my mind was, you're being honest with me? <laughs> you don't owe me an explanation. You owe you an explanation. Because if you have 28 days to plug into something and give it your all and you choose not to, and then you're in a position where you're not able to afford the, the monthly payment, it's, it's like you're saying to yourself, this is what I have to do, but I didn't do it. So now this is what I have to do. And so it goes back to the silence of the land. We, we have to have a shift in mindset for us to get there. Albert Einstein stated very eloquently, 
the mindset that it took to cause the problem will not be the mindset that you will use for the solution. You have to change it. You have to shift it. So it saddened me, not because of what happened, not because of what they said, not because of the outcome, but because I re recognize it there's nothing I can say to that friend. That friend is going to have to say it to themselves. Think about it, Dr. B. Just think about it. Just think about what you just said. I mean, you think about, you know, you have to have the mindset to know that you deserve it and you believe, you have to believe that you deserve it. That's the mindset we have to develop. Because if we were talking about a McDonald's franchise, okay, um, there's an investment that goes into that. But the return on investment is so much greater that you wouldn't question the initial investment. You would not question the fact that you wanna invest into yourself. We gear our children from the time that they're student, we gear them from the time that they're young, that they're going to college, but they there is no end game to that. The destination is college. And that's ultimately where we push them towards and where we push them to. But we haven't taught them to focus on something that's going to return. And so 86% of people have degrees that they're not using. And I mean, I'm one of them, you know what I mean? So I have nothing against education, but of course it's what you're being educated upon. So if you're looking, but you know, just think about it, how many right now, one of the biggest things people are pushing for, whether they're joking or not in social media is student loan cancellation of debt. And that's because you're willing to take these debts, you're willing to do that to get this education that 86% of individuals don't use, and it's still sitting in the package that they mailed it to you in half of the time, because I know that's where mine is, you know, so just think about that simple fact, just think about that, what are you being educated upon, but yeah, you're willing to invest in yourself, and so that's just that key word that you just said, cost, this is not a cost. It's, it's not a cost. And that's that mindset shift and that focus that we're talking on. You're willing to pay and invest in yourself $40,000 for a college education, 60,000, 100,000. You know, people get excited when their student loans are paid off. They're petitioning right now for the government to pay off student loans because you are willing to make that investment into yourself. So what you're doing is investing into yourself. This is an investment, but the return on investment is so much greater. It is so much greater because had that person that gave that testimony this morning not made that investment to themselves, there would not be a testimony that, oh, I paid all my bills for next month. It's not even March yet, but all her March bills are paid off of what she did an hour with us this morning. Wow. Now, you know, you made me think about a joke that goes uh, that's, that uh, one of my college roommates and I, we, uh, we always joke about. You know, he's working on his doctor right now. Both of us has, have advanced degrees. And he, uh, we always say, you know what? Based on our life experiences and our inability to navigate and the mistakes we made, he said, you know, those folks owe us a refund. You think we might get, be able to get a refund back from the college? <laughs> but they don't give refunds, even though you are not, you're, even after you spent all that money you just mentioned, Ms. Dara, uh, and uh, you find out that what you got from them is not as effective as effective as you thought it would be, then uh, you you can't submit for a refund from the college. You know you got the, you got that little piece of paper, and it it means a whole lot to you and your parents. But unfortunately, many times when you get out here in this uh, this economy, uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot to some people. And so you you got to have a skill set that can impact this that's relevant and that can impact this uh, this envi work environment that we find ourselves in. Exactly. Dr. Bywood, Dr. Bywood, have you did you have you heard about Lot and Lot's wife? Uh, I, I remember you. Heard, I, I'm thinking back where you talked about the person uh, decided to, that it was too much for them that, that to sacrifice or to commit. Uh, to this learning process, and they wanted to go back. You know, Lot's wife, that was a terrible place that uh, Lot was in, and God wanted to destroy it. And while they were escaping the, the violence that were going to come from the sky, uh, Lot's wife was still looking back. That was something that she cherished in that negative environment that they were trying to escape. 
And, and, and that goes back to what we said earlier, that we get attached to that which impacts us negatively. And it's a struggle. We like that. We, we used to have a cat. My sister had a cat. And the cat, you know, would climb the tree and get stuck in the tree and get in the tree. And then uh, she she sit up there and just meow, meow, meow until we would get the ladder, go up the tree. And when you reach for the cat, she would fight you. Now, she screamed until you went up there to get her. And then when you tried to get her, she would scream. She would scratch you and hold, try to hold on to the tree because she was trying to take her down or do what you thought they were asking. The cat was asking you to do. Uh, when the, when I saw, saw the cat up there in, uh, a half a day and would come down, uh, my mother said, get that cat out of the tree. And, and she wants to come out of the tree. That's my mother's interpretation of what was happening with the cat. And so I would go up there believing the cat wanted to come out of the tree. And when you try to pull the cat out of the tree, the cat scratches you and try to hold on to the tree. And some people are like that. When you try to pull them out of this negative uh, situation that they're in, they're complaining about the broke, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted. And uh, you, uh, you, you try to help them and intervene in that negative situation, but there's something about it that they just simply cherish. The familiarity, they're complacent, they're comfortable. That's what they are, you know, that familiarity. And that's why you got to shift that thinking. And it's our responsibility as well, you know, because we know better. When you know better, you do better. And so it's our responsibility as well to make sure that, you know, as we're sharing this information or we're on this show, that we're also helping you, even in our conversation, make those mental adjustments, make those, make those adjustments of understanding. Because anytime education is very important. And that's why we do this from an educational standpoint. Even if you've ever been on our live trading calls or you've ever been on any of our, you know, our, our coaching, mentorship, anything. You know, it's all about, you know, empowering you, you know, it's, it's all about making sure you're empowered. And so part of that empowerment is helping you understand the importance of you investing into yourself the, from just from a personal development standpoint, from a educational standpoint, you know, it's all about helping you understand that because you mentioned it, the mental. So even the mental you know, that, that's a shift and that's a transition. And so part of what we do is, is pouring to you as we pouring, helping you understand that this is definitely something that you can achieve, helping you understand that reality of the things that's been embedded in you. I mean, you think about it, my story, you know, single parent household, mother terminally ill, you know, from Louisiana. And so, you know, the reality is, you know, even I've been told by people and, and I was told that I was going to be a statistic that I should be a statistic, that, you know, that that should have been my reality. And I've had people that I really cared about speak that into my life. And so it takes a mindset. It takes, you know, you to have something on the inside of you, that burning desire to want more and do more. And so I'm very thankful that I had the foundation from my mother that I had because you know she told me to keep my eyes and ears open and she made sure that I understand that there was always more out there and you know and and just even understanding that from that base you know understanding that is I can accomplish anything I want to in life and so no matter what was happening no matter how bad things looked no matter the days we didn't have food to eat you know, no matter what was happening, because there were days I went to bed hungry. There were days I didn't. Eat, I woke up and didn't even know if we were going to have a roof over our head the next day because of where we were, quote unquote, economically. So yes, I should have been a statistic based on all of those factors. But when you know and you want and you go get and accept no excuses, you know, then guess what? You can have it. And so there's a journey and there's a process to that. And so I was willing to go through that process. And that's why we do what we do and pour into others because there is someone out there that never has somebody to speak life into them. There is someone out there that's never had someone, you know, even just getting that little bit from my mother while she was sick, you know, understand what I'm saying? Getting that little bit from her while she couldn't even get out of bed some days because of her illness, she still did not allow that to stop her from pouring into us. 
even when other people were telling us you will never have this and you'll never be this, you know, because of our circumstances, because of our situations, you know, life was always poured into us. And that's what we do because you deserve more, you know, you deserve so much greater. And so it's very, you know, when, when individuals don't believe that they can or because nobody ever told them, we're here to tell you. We're here to let you know that you can have. We're here to let you know that we're here to guide you. We're here to help you. We're here to launch you. You know, that's what we're here for. And so everything that's out there that's ultimately been hidden in plain sight, everything that's out there is yours for the taking. You just have to be ready to receive and respond when an opportunity presents itself. That, that's so very true, Ms. Darren. You are a very positive uh, statistic. You enlisted as a enlisted uh, female, and you rose almost to the top of the feed, feeding chain. You retired as a major, and you were on one step from being colonel. I'm trying to remember these steps and these. Uh, <laughs> it's on top of it. Yeah, and so I mean, that's a positive statistic, and it was because I believe it was because you said to yourself you could do it, and and no one, and, and I'm sure there were naysayers around you saying, "Oh, you can't do it," you know. I don't even know why you trying to mess. I don't know why you taking that test. You're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that happened. Let me tell you how accurate you are. Let me tell you how accurate you are. My when I was transitioning to become an officer you know i literally and this is not even part of the process but i literally had because i did not allow my officer in charge of me to do my re-enlistment he wrote a recommendation of disapproval for me to become an officer and so i had to petition for me to even go into the officer training program so and he had never spoken to me you know, we did not, he had, I didn't know who he was for the most part. I had seen him around the office a few times. He was kind of new, but because I did not allow him to do my reenlistment. So it was something personal for him that he took out on me. So it, you know, it was always something that I had to go through and I had to petition our commander and actually go to him. And I had to prove myself in order to be able to go through it. So it's always been somebody telling me you can't do, you won't do, you're not going to. But I've always told myself I can and I will and it's going to happen. That's right, that, that's the attitude that we have to take into life. That's the attitude we have to take that there's no reason that we cannot uh, take advantage and learn this information and remove that idea that it's all been hidden in plain sight and we can be economically unbothered. Ms. Dyer is gonna, gonna tell us now about how we can, uh, you can contact us, you, you can take advantage of this opportunity and you can be a blessing to so many people. Absolutely, absolutely. So our website, beyourownbankmovement.com, beyourownbankmovement.com, go there, visit us. Some of you are streaming from my Facebook page, Tasha Monique Dyer, go follow. I promise you, you are here for a treat. And also, I just want you to know that we have some life-changing information because as I stated, we, you know, what we're here to do is pour into you. Our book, Be Your Own Bank, Hidden in Plain Sight. At that website, beyourownbankmovement.com, you can definitely pick up a copy. And I just need you all to know that we want you to think like a bank, be your own bank, Think like a bank, act like a bank, be your own bank, look like the bank, feel like the bank. That's ultimately what we're here for. And so we have our paraphernalia. You see my nice little coffee cup right here. We have all of that coming for you very, very soon. So stay tuned. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I definitely can tell you it's time for you to make that transition. You know, think like a bank, act like a bank, be your own bank, feel like the bank, and look like the bank. I promise you. Be your own bank movement.com. Accept the challenge and learn how to be your own bank. Ladies and gentlemen, this will definitely be the best decision that you have ever made. And I promise you, we have individuals whose children's children, you know, children are definitely following along this process. So just imagine you being able to see that legacy shift and that legacy change as you're walking through the motions because you shift to positive, you shift to understanding and speak the I am. I am worthy. I deserve this. I am the a BYOB master trader. I am the big bank. You're not just a bank. You are the big bank. 
So when we say be your own bank, we mean literally. You're going to learn how to move your money. You're going to learn how to operate and do exactly what banks do. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a wonderful broadcast. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed each and every last one of you all. But reach out. Fill out that contact card on our website. Uh, join us this evening. We're live in the market this evening where we're going to give you that foundational base to help you understand exactly what you can do to be successful. I've enjoyed it. Love you all. And I'll definitely see you tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's time for you to accept the challenge and be your own bank. God bless you.